Thank you for joining me today. Um, it is, what is today? It's Friday, March 24th, 2023. And this morning as I was spending time with the Lord, he gave me a message. But before I go into that, I want to say a few things. I want to say thank you for being here, Chuck, and I appreciate you all very much. I also want to let you know that Dave and Amelia are out of town for the next three weeks. They're on a missions trip down to Mexico. And so I'm going to be taking over the uh, Sunday Zoom meetings if you want to join us, they start at 5 Eastern, 4 Central, and 2 Pacific time. We'd love to have you there. So uh, the link is in the description below the video. Let's see. What else do I want to tell you guys? Um, goodness sakes, I think that's all for that part, except to say we appreciate you very much and we pray for you daily. Oh, send your prayer request to Teresa at prayersofvickyandchuck.com. Don't forget to sign, uh, subscribe to Chuck's music channel if you haven't already. It's Chuck Adkins Music here on YouTube. And what am I forgetting? Newsletter's coming out in about a week, so be looking for that. If you haven't signed up for it, then the way you do that is also in the description box below. The information's there. Now, before I get into the message, there are some things I want to talk to you about because they really are, um, they're very much on my heart and I think they're on Father's heart too. There are a lot of, there's so much going on uh, now, you know, we all are hearing all these words from different people, all these messages, um, and some of them are so completely conflicting. I mean, you know, there's, we've got both camps. And the thing that I believe Father wants me to share with you before I read the message is first of all, something that happened to me about, I don't know how long ago it's been probably six or seven years ago. I'm not sure exactly. Um, it was an experience I had and, and here's the thing about that. This is why I'm talking about this whole thing about there are different people saying different things and so on and so forth. And the Lord said, be careful, see to it that you're not deceived when they, when he was asked by his disciples, how are we going to know the sign of your coming? When are you going to be back and all that stuff? And he said, be careful that you're not deceived. So how do we not be deceived? There's really only one way, and that is to draw close to and stay close to the Lord continually, to know his word, to know what he says in his word, and um, to be in the relationship with him so that we learn how to hear his spirit. Now, I know all of that is a process. I don't think God's, you know, he didn't say, okay, here you go. Now you've accepted me as your Lord and Savior, and you know Jesus is the way and all that. So now I want you to have the Bible memorized in a second. <laughs> he didn't say any of that. As a matter of fact, he said that we have his spirit to teach us so that we don't need a human being to teach us, which means to me, we could be on a desert island somewhere with no Bible, and God would still be able to teach us. But our responsibility is still to come to know him, to get in his word, to spend time with him, and to obey him. So, uh, I'm sorry, I see that. See that flashing on that picture of my head? That's at the fan above my head is spinning and it's, it's knocking the light around. So that's what that is. Um, so that is our responsibility is to come to know him. Because we are going to hear things and see things that... Maybe we just aren't real sure are from God. And, uh, and he's just reminding me of how, you know, there are people that will just automatically throw out anything um, that seems that they can't read word for word in the Bible that actually occurred in Jesus' day or in Scripture. And yet, who was it that wrote in Scripture and said, if everything that the Lord had done while he was on this earth or to be recorded, not even all of the books in the world can contain all of the miracles, all of the things he did. So we only have a piece. And, um, and with that piece, we have to be careful of two things. We have to be careful that we don't limit him to only what he did. And we have to be careful that we don't uh, just willingly accept anything and everything we hear. This is wisdom. So... So I'm saying that before I share a testimony with you, because one of the things that God said is that if we aren't careful, then we're going to throw out things that are him just because we don't read them specifically that kind of a testimony in scripture, or we are going to uh, just buy into everything. And 
And when we do that, we either miss something that he really wanted to say to us or was trying to teach us, or we receive something that wasn't him at all. So, so that being said now, I am going to share a testimony with you, and it will go into uh, something you will hear him saying in the message uh, when he talks about, um, well, anyway. So here's the testimony, because he reminded me of it while we were spending time together, and, and he was giving me this message for today. A number of years ago, so you guys, oh, sorry, I gotta say this. Pray about everything. Do your due diligence, which is to continue to grow day by day, line upon line, precept upon precept, listen to him, learn, grow, talk, do, obey, repent, you know, just be with him, spend time with him, and then take the things you hear from me or anyone else to the Lord and say, was that you, God? I really want to know if that's you. And he will show you. He'll either lead you to scripture, remind you of scripture, or he, I mean, there are just so many ways that Father talks to us. So he knows how to speak your language. He knows how to get it across to you, whether or not something you're hearing is, is, his, uh, is his or not. Okay. So a number of years ago when I was worshiping, spending time in worship, which would just be praising God and singing and just being with him in his, in this particular time, all of a sudden, and I'm going to say it like this because I don't know how else to say it. I don't know if I was literally there or if I was, um, or if it was in vision. I can't tell you that to, so that helps me understand when Paul said whether in the bit in in the body or out of the body he didn't know well this was that kind of a thing where I didn't know if I was still in my body or not but this is what I this is what I experienced one moment I was singing praises to him the next moment I was in heaven under the right side of God under you know how scripture talks about under his feathers I was under his feathers and I wasn't just, I mean, under his, I was under his wing and I was rolling around like a little kid in feathers and they were his. And, uh, this is why I said, you guys pray about this stuff. Um, I was rolling around his feathers and they were very white. They were beautiful, but it was not the whiteness of the feathers that, uh, was so impactful for me. It was the softness of his feathers. And as I rolled around, my hand hit something and I reached in, I pulled out this gem stone, like a, I don't know which ones I did in what order, but I remember there was a ruby I picked out, picked out this thing is like as big as my hand. And then I rolled some more. There was a, it wasn't that I was looking for these things. It was that I, as I was being with him and just reveling in that time with him, worshiping and, and just being in tremendous joy and peace to be with him that these things, I would find these things, these jewels. So then, uh, then I was no longer rolling around in his feathers, but I was an eagle and I was soaring and I will, and you know, I don't see perspective is I'm starting on my right side. I was soaring as an eagle with my wings tilted in and he was, he was the object of my uh, focus. So as I'm, as I'm flying, I am screeching, I'm an eagle, and I'm screeching at the top of my lungs, and fire is coming out of my mouth. I think it was my mouth, it might have been my eyes, it might have been both. Right now, I can't remember exactly which it was. I just know fire was coming out of me, and as I, and I knew all of the other, uh, I knew the I knew the uh, four living creatures were there, I knew everybody was there that it talks about in scripture being there. <laughs> but my focus was not on them. I didn't see them, but I was aware of their presence. And I was literally soaring around God's head. And um, as I flew, and I didn't flap my wings or anything, didn't have to, I was literally just soaring. And as I flew, all of these gemstones started falling out from underneath my wings, and I knew they were falling to the earth. Okay, so then the next thing that happened and I didn't make it all the way around his head. I started over on the right side in flight and flew around over towards the left side. And then I went down and landed on father's foot, his right foot. <laughs> and uh, the Lord let me sit there for just a moment. And then he gently kicked me. I, I don't know, kicked is not the right word. He, you know, he just kind of booted me down <laughs> back to the earth. And the, 
and the vision or the experience, whatever it was, was over. Okay, so I'm going to leave that with you. I, there's nothing more for me to say. You can pray about that. But as you listen to the message, you are going to hear Father talk about his jewels. Okay, guys? So let me pull that up for you. And by the way, the transcript is already typed up. Yay, God. But as as it often is, it's too, oh, my nose is itchy. It's too um, large to fit in the uh, YouTube space uh, that so that so what I'm going to do is I will put a link in the description to the blog to my blog and you'll be able to find the full the full testimony or the full uh, message that I'm going to read to you now you'll be able to find that there okay guys and you should be able to copy it from there and print it there and at some point we're going to get all these all of these messages on the website but right now I'm not sure exactly how to do that so okay okay so let's pray father i thank you for everyone who's going to hear this message i thank you for everyone who's come and all of those you're going to send it to i thank you for being the lord god almighty there's no one no one like you I thank you for the things you're doing in all of our lives. You see us down here. We're all, you know, we see in part. We know in part. We, we get some things right. We, you know, we stumble. We fall. We do things. God, I pray for all of us, every single one of us, because we all need the grace that you, that you extend to us daily and the mercies that you give us daily that are new every morning. And we need to walk in that where other people are concerned. And you see, you know our flesh, you know how hard that can be sometimes. So, Father, we ask you, forgive us, crush us, do whatever you need to do to get us to the place we want to be, where our spirits want to be, where we are in communion with you all of the time. And our flesh is simply following along and obeying. And our soul is as well. So we thank you and praise you. I ask you to... Uh, um, confirm to those who listen or those who will read this later confirm your words in here Father God that they would know that it's you and I thank you and praise you for everything you're doing in Yeshua's name Amen okay guys okay now the title of this message is I am the God and I hear that before I read, I'm going to tell you so that hopefully you'll hear it the same way. I hear him say, I am the God, you know, like the song, I'm the God that healeth thee. And as a matter of fact, that's one of the first lines in this. I'm the God that heals you. But then I also hear him saying almost uh, trying to figure out how to say it to you. I am comma the God, you know, I am the God. Okay, so here we go. I am the God. I am the God that heals you. I am the God that makes all things new. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God whose boundaries are limitless, for I am the God who reaches to the furthest distance of creation and beyond. I cannot be contained. I cannot be defined. I cannot be overrun. I cannot be compared. I cannot be destroyed, and I cannot be stopped. Nothing can overwhelm me. Nothing can overcome me. Nothing can conquer or control me. I am in every place, for I am in every space of creation. Creation is mine. Life is mine. Wisdom is mine. Joy is mine. Peace is mine. Life is mine. Life is mine. Life is mine. The thunder of my voice could destroy everything in existence. With just one word, I brought forth the light. I picked up the dust of the earth, dust that I had created, dust the enemy wanted to own and still seeks to steal from me, and I created from it living beings. My breath filled the lungs of a man and a woman. Life was born in the dust I had formed. Do you hear me? Life, which cannot exist without me, was given to the dust of the earth. Do you hear me? 
I can do anything. From what you call nothing, I created everything. Even nothing was not nothing to me. Even nothing itself was mine. Sorry, guys, I got to turn my phone off. I'm sorry I didn't do that before. Sorry for the interruption. Are you racing through these things I am saying to you? Are you hurrying to hear my next thoughts spoken? Are you so eager to hear the next thing I will say that you are not fully taking in what I have said until now? Be still, listen, wait. I am God. Know that I am. I am pleased by your hunger for my words. I know you delight to hear from me. That brings joy to my heart, beloved ones. But I say to you now, do not be in such a hurry that you do not take in the wonder and consider the magnitude of what I have said. For sometimes you are in need of the reminders of my indescribable majesty. It is not indescribable to me, even though it is uncomprehendable to you. I'm going to stop for a minute because I asked Father about that word uncomprehendable, and I included this in the transcript, so you'll see it there. I asked him about this word uncomprehendable as it is not found in the dictionary, and my computer kept trying to correct it when I was typing the manuscript up. Father said he's not limited by the dictionary. I asked him if he wanted me to find another word, and he said no. He said the meaning is clear, even if the dictionary doesn't like it, and that he does. So the word is uncomprehendable. I do not say these things, and I'm back in the message, Father speaking again. I do not say these things with an attitude of pride. I say these things because they are truth, and there are times you will need to be reminded who I am. You need to fully embrace within every part of you that I am who I say I am. Nothing causes me to fear. Nothing causes me to tremble. Nothing that sets itself against me causes me to wonder. I am not intimidated by anything. I am who I say I am. And that is the sum of all you need to know. For if you embrace the truth of those words, you will see and know that I have made promises that cannot be broken and will not be destroyed by anyone or anything at any time or in any way. You will know that I have done that all I have done is good and perfect in every way, even when it did not seem to make sense to mankind. You will know that I go beyond in giving and find great pleasure in seeing you prosper in your endeavors when those endeavors are in harmony with what I have chosen for you. Hang on, guys. You will find the rest for your souls and the strength for your battle in the comfort and confidence of those words and that knowledge brings to you. For you see, long before you were born, my plans for you were fixed, and my faithfulness to your future was established. I always knew I would hold to the commitment I made to bring you into my kingdom if you would be willing to receive me and choose to endure to the end of your life the commitment you would make to me. I do not break my commitments, nor do I neglect to fulfill my promises to those who are truly mine. If I have chosen you, then you can believe and trust that I will keep you, for it is true that not all who are called are chosen, for not all who are called will answer, not all who are called will say yes and follow. When you were still unformed, and from the foundation of the world, I knew you. I knew all those who would say yes to my call, all those who would give back, the, give back to me the lives I gave to them, for the life I gave for them. And that word life is capitalized. He's talking to, about Messiah. These are my chosen people. These are my precious jewels that have been hidden in the earth, and many of which have been brought out of the earth. Yet many today have been hidden, tucked away until the time I choose to call them forth. There are those jewels in this hour who are reflecting the brilliance of my love and power. There are those who are reflecting my wisdom. There are those who are tucked away on their knees in their prayer closets, pouring out hearts of love to me and warring on spiritual ground for lives they will never meet in their time on earth. 
There are those unpolished stones, those jewels freshly mined who are being prepared to shine with my light for all the world to see as they come forth from the caves of darkness in which they were living. I know my jewels in the earth, and I know my power to perfect each one. All of these things I have told you, all of the remembrances I have brought to you, uh, brought you to about my glory, all of these things I have shown and told you about who I am, these are the things that will shine forth from you as you continue to draw closer, ever closer to me. For in you who are chosen, I have chosen to bring you from being the dust of the earth to being the jewels of my kingdom work on the earth. I have chosen you to declare who I am, to proclaim the truth of the only way, Yeshua HaMashiach, the only begotten Son of God, the Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth and worlds without end. I have chosen you to be the lights in this world, in this hour, the beauty of the heart of God, the witnesses of the testimony of Jesus Christ, the voices calling out repentance, and the arms and hearts of love for the lost. I have chosen, I have called and chosen you to be and do many things. But above all else, I have called and chosen you to be mine. Remember who I am. Remember whose you are. Remember who you are called to serve. Remember that I have all you need every day to do and to know, to say and to give. Today I call many of you who have fallen into discouragement to come out of that dark place. There is no life there, so return to the joy of your salvation. I call many of you who have been waiting, who have been waiting for loved ones to repent and turn to me, and I say to you, I have heard your cries. I love your hearts of love for those who have not turned. Remember who I am. Trust me to do what only I can do. I call those of you who have been called to the battlefield of prayer ministry and say to you, I hear your war prayers and see how you have hidden yourselves away from the glory and recognition of man, having chosen the greater part of honor found here with me in the secret place where I will honor you. Our intimacy is very precious to me, and I wait as you enter in to be with many, with me. Many of you are called to the front lines and find yourselves the objects of ridicule, rejection, persecution, and even physical or violent assault. The equipment you carry and the weapons you use in battle on a daily basis were forged in the intimacy of study and the personal relationship you have wisely chosen to enter into with me. In the warfare you find yourself in, remember that you are never alone. My angelic help is always with you in those battles to which you have been called. My spirit will always be with you and will lead the way through the counsel I give you in each battle. Remember always to listen and obey. The victory is mine, and you will be blessed to enjoy it with me. My called out chosen followers, my living stones, my jewels who honor me not only in word, but also in deed. It is my desire and my promise that I will satisfy your souls with good things as you continue to abide in my love. Wonders of great joy are yours to be experienced as you walk faithfully in honor and submission to me, for I am the one who created you and the one for whom you were created. Again this day, I pour out my love on you in countless and often unseen ways. I am, and I will always be, I am. And that's the end of the message, you guys. As I was sharing that last part about the living stones that he said, he took me back to the vision. And, and what he said was those things that I was pulling out of the finding in the feathers, finding in the feathers, those jewels, those were his, his jewels on the earth. Those were his uh, precious gemstones that were, he was showing me. Those were some of you guys.
for anyone who loves him and is following in him and um, who is really surrendered to him. God sees us as the jewels in the crown of our Savior, <clears throat> and he continues to polish us. He continues to refine us. We all need it. I don't know anybody that's all perfectly pure and, you know, who's all got it all figured out and is walking 100% in, in that set-apart place called holiness in such a way in this earth that, I mean, just they would be so brilliant, we wouldn't probably be able to look at them. <laughs> but this is where God says, give one another grace because I have gemstones that are polished. I have those that who are, that are, you know, just the babies that are just now coming out of, uh, that are just, they have just recently been mined. They have just been, uh, taken from the, the depths, the dark places and all, all of those things in the earth, the world they've been taken out of. And he said, uh, he is, he's cleaning, he's cleaning them up. He's polishing them. So even when I was rolling around in his feathers, there was no one gemstone that was more beautiful than another. I think that's it, you guys. God bless you. Um, if you want a copy of the transcript, as I said, I'm going to post it as soon as I post this uh, as soon as I post this message, which will be as soon as I get it all processed after I'm finished recording. It will be up probably within the hour. Again, it is March 24th, 2023. I should have it up. At this point, it's 3.04 p.m. I should have it up central time. I should have it up by 4 o'clock at the latest. God bless you all. Love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I think I will go ahead and play one of Chuck's songs now because I don't think I've been talking for a real long time. <laughs> and uh, ask you, please... Please share these messages. You know, if the things you're hearing are blessing you, how many people do you know, just for example, who are struggling with discouragement or questioning God's love for them and just can't seem to hear? And yet these words that he pours out to us um, would bless them so much. So please share them. And if you have not subscribed to the channel and you don't want to subscribe, I understand that. But if you have, uh, thank you so much. Um, but I am going to ask you guys, because we need your help to get the messages, to get the algorithms to be willing to do something. We need you to, to hit the thumbs up button, the like button, whatever you call that thing on there so that it gets things moving and hopefully they get out there farther. God bless you all. Thank you so much for being here. Now here comes Chuck. <laughs> 